So hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to talk about obviously creating your first Hello World application that can you can write once and then run across Teams, Outlook, and Office.com. Uh, before we go into how to write and deploy this kind of app, I want to share a little bit of an example on the types of scenarios you can enable with this type of app. Uh, so let's take an example uh, of a simple app or favorite company, Contoso. Uh, and imagine you're building an app uh, for your sales team, uh, which tracks their action plans. So the CAP Contoso Action Plan app allows sales teams to build and coordinate action plans using a nice intuitive interface. Now, the sales team spends a lot of time inside teams communicating with their peers and customers. So it makes sense for this CAP app to be a personal tab in teams. Uh, the sales team can access it and update the action plan without having to leave Teams. If you're already familiar with developing apps for Teams, this CAP app is, is nothing but a, a personal tab. But the additional piece here is now it's not only in Teams, you can also run it in Office.com or Outlook. So the sales team isn't just using Teams, they're also using Outlook to email and schedule meetings with their customers. So CAP can now also show up in Outlook as a personal tab, just like it did in Teams, and you can access it as just another app in Outlook. Similarly, as part of their daily work, the sales team will often have to collaborate on various documents and presentations. Many of them might, it, might use Office.com or the Office app on Windows to discover their most recent files that they're working on along with their peers. So it makes sense for this app, app to also now show up as a personal tab in Office, just like it does in Teams. So that's just an example of the types of scenarios that you can enable by just taking that personal tab app that was initially in Teams, but now is available across Outlook and Office.com. So now let's get into, hopefully that gave you some background. Now let's get into how you can actually start building like the very first Hello World app and what are all the places and uh, environment setups you need to do to go build it. So today's one-stop shop to get started on everything is going to be the Teams Toolkit. You can go get it from aka.ms VS Teams Toolkit, uh, or if you already have uh, Visual Studio Code, you can just search for the Teams Toolkit extension uh, and go get it from there. Uh, once you do install the extension, what you'll notice is you get this additional Toolkit, Teams Toolkit tab over here. Uh, and there's a nice little quick start guide uh, that you can follow uh, to just get started with the whole experience. The very first step it does is Sort of just a pre-checker, make sure you have the right version of Node and NPM running. Uh, I've already done that, so it's checked and I can go on to the next step, uh, which is let's start building the first Teams app. So you can create a brand new app from scratch, or you can view some samples and open up those samples uh, from the Teams toolkit itself. Uh, for today, I'm just going to pick the very basic Hello World tab sample which essentially just shows up a tab in, in Teams. And uh, I've already opened this up, uh, so I don't have to go in and create it. It's, it's already in my VS Code environment, so I'll, I'll just say, yes, this is done, and I am ready to start building my first Teams app. So once I have the a sample clone in my local drive, uh, the next step is you need a Microsoft 365 tenant to start testing your app. This is what I think Bessa alluded to earlier, uh, which is you actually get this free developer tenant, uh, Instant Dev Sandbox, where you can start side loading your apps as you're developing them. From the VS Teams toolkit, you can actually just click on that link and go spin up and sign up for this app. Uh, or if you already have like an organization tenant, you can sign into that. And the only additional thing you have to do is make sure that side loading is enabled on that tenant, because side loading is the thing that allows you to deploy that test app on your tenant, hit F5 and debug things. Once you do these steps, I've already done these, you can then sign in to VS Toolkit with your credentials, whether it's for your developer tenant or your organization tenant, and then the toolkit will automatically check and make sure that side loading is enabled and you're good to go there. So this is just an environmental set of steps that you need to do. Uh, once that is done, you are ready to hit F5. You have the app, you have the environment, uh, you're ready to just run a local preview and you get the option of which browser you want to run it in. I already have that app running. It's already debugging, so we don't have to debug again. Uh, let me start switch to my edge window here. So 
uh, it is that app uh, that we just cloned that is now running in Teams. Now, since I said this is not just a Teams app, it could also run in Outlook or Office. Uh, you can actually navigate to office.com and click on the apps, and the same app will now show up uh, in, uh, in office.com as well. And then finally, you can also go to Outlook, and the exact same app is pinned. Now, just to show that it's the exact same app and, and you're running F5, I'll just click over here, and then I have a breakpoint that's set up, which is going to hit right over here. So even when uh, you are uh, debugging across all these test apps, whether it's Teams or Office.com uh, or Outlook, it's actually the exact same app that you're testing out through Edge. Uh, it's just another web app. You can hit with breakpoints just like you would with VS Code uh, and continue your development environment. So oh, let me get that window back in um, and hit continue on that breakpoint so that we can continue there. Uh, now that you have kind of gotten your local dev loop running, you clone the app, you hit a local F5, uh, you might actually want to deploy it to a cloud environment and, and test things out from there itself. And the sample ads itself tells you how you can go about doing that. So I'll minimize that window and go back to my Teams toolkit. Uh, so right here along with the accounts, in addition to your developer tenant that you signed into, you can also sign in to your Azure tenant where you can deploy your cloud resources. Uh, once you've signed in, you can simply say, oh, I didn't want to provision that again, but you can simply say provision it, I'll cancel out of there because it's already provisioned. Uh, and uh, it'll go in and create the right resources, the right services that are needed for this app on your Azure backend, even go in and register the Azure AD registration uh, if needed. And once that is provisioned, the environment for dev will show up as provision and tell you which resources it's using. Uh, just like you hit F5 on the local debug, now you can also hit F5 on the, the actual cloud deployment that you have developed over there. So not only can you do kind of the local loop on, on VS Code, you can actually deploy to your uh, cloud environment and, and start testing things out over there. So once I've done this, I'll just head back to that Get Started page. I have previewed my Teams app locally. The last step is say you've tested things out and you are really ready to deploy uh, your team uh, application, say, to your environment. You're still within VS Code. VS Code lets you have some deployment commands, which I can click on over here. Uh, and that takes you back to that deployment page. And there's a couple of options here. I can say publish to Teams, or I can just zip the Teams metadata package and, and get a zip file that then I can upload to Partner Center or Dev Portal or wherever. Uh, the Publish to Teams is super cool because even if you're not the admin, what it's going to do is allow you to give the options to say, install for your organization. Directly, it'll send your app to your Teams administrator for approval via the Teams portal. So as a developer, you might not have the right permissions to deploy the app to your environment, but from here you can submit it, and then the admin on your tenant will get a notification or a pending approval uh, on the custom app that you've submitted. Uh, and then they can go in and allow it, and then that app will show up. So right from within Teams, this was like a quick tour, right from within Teams, you can get started, deploy your cloud environment, get a sample at, hit F5, uh, on your local image, provision the thing in the cloud, and then deploy the app on your own tenant and, and wait for approval from the admin. So just a quick overview of everything that's coming uh, online with Teams. There'll be more that'll be coming in uh, as we head towards build, which is less than a month away almost. And uh, you know, looking forward to any feedback and questions people might have. As we have a few minutes, don't, don't remove stop sharing. Uh, I want to ask a few questions and I can help on answering the second one. So what about Teams for the desktop? Will this work in Teams desktop as well? Uh, so yes, showing... it will. Uh, the yep. F5 story, the debug story is for web only, but the same app, once you've sideloaded it through VS Code, you can actually launch Teams desktop and also see it working over there. And I have, well, this this is almost a technical nuance. So Jim Duncan is saying, if I enable site loading, site load app and disable site loading, would it work? Uh, my understanding is yes, because it's just a site loading 
on the site loading time. Uh, I don't know if you can sour up confirm that. So if you kind of uh, enable the site loading, you site load the app, you disable the site loading, will the applications which were site loaded still keep on working? I I guess hmm. I don't know. Uh, you have to verify. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know off the top. I am curious why you would want to do that, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Answer. I guess it's exception for one application or or another, so I it's see. just uh, so story on that one. Um, and Outlook Desktop two, well, that's going to be yeah. in the plans, absolutely. Just checking quickly the main questions. Uh, that's it. And then there was a question related on what will that work to on the Microsoft Teams apps created with SPFX and not yet. Uh, that is in the in the roadmap. Uh, so SPX yeah. team, SPFX team is aligning to the new V2 packaging model, and then the Meta OS people are, and SPFX team people are working together on making that happen. So SPFX has the advantage that you don't then need to externally host anything because stuff is getting hosted directly in Microsoft 365, and that's probably why people keep on using that so widely. So and asking about that, but. I guess that's all on the list, unless I missed something. There was one question from Russell. Uh, when this runs in Outlook, can you use Office JS to interact with the mailbox? Uh, I would say, again, uh, it's a not yet. Right now, it's still using Teams JS to interact with certain Outlook capabilities like mail. But uh, you, like the only mail capabilities right now, you can create a mail and then kind of queue it up for sending. All the Office JS capabilities are still sort of in a separate app and we are looking at how we can kind of uh, bring those together and make them work together, but not yet. I think the direction is really cool. We're looking into doing a unified package, unified model, unified coordination, administrative, all of that. So, but this journey is going to take a while. So, but we'll get there. And and the objective obviously is not to do any disruptive moves and shutting down anything what we're doing right now, because again, we need to do this carefully together with our ecosystem and community. So let, we'll keep on doing these demos for sure in these calls and, and show stuff in the build as well and, and so on. But thank you, Saurabh, on that one. Mm -hmm.